Sitting in the heart of downtown Clovis is the Norman and Vi Petty Rock and Roll Museum. A tribute to this musical legend and the early days of rock and roll, the museum houses a reconstructed recording studio, countless musical paraphernalia, and plenty of studio and backstage photographs documenting this monumental era. So why here in Clovis? Of all the fascinating history that has occurred in our state, perhaps one of the lesser known tales is the story of Clovis's native son Norman Petty and the role he and his hometown played in the history of rock and roll. In a nutshell, Norman Petty was a gifted musician and brilliant sound man. His precision and knack for sound, as well as his experimental inclinations, created the sound most notably heard in the legendary tracks of Buddy Holly and Roy Orbison, iconic musicians whose recordings at Norman Petty's studio helped launch their careers. The studio at the museum is fashioned after the original studio, located at its original address, 1313 West 7th Street. Kenneth Broad runs it today, and I've set up an appointment to see the studio in person. This is the room where most of the artists uh, would assemble when sessions were underway. And Norman Petty recorded by sessions and not by the hour. He didn't believe that creativity came by the clock. And what kind of producer, what, what kind of person was he in, in the music sense? Oh, he was, he was very exacting, perfectionist, mm -hmm. had perfect pitch. But he was a kind, gentle man that uh, really had a lot of patience with artists that came here to record. I was told about one session they had 84, 85 takes on it. Let's talk about what Norman's musical kind of sound was because what he created here in Clovis was something that no one had ever seen. It influenced the likes of the Beatles and all these other people that came out of that sound. Rock and roll came here because Buddy Holly had been turned down at DECA and came back to Lubbock to talk to the disc jockey there. What am I going to do? They don't want my music. He said, well, why don't you try Clovis, New Mexico? And Norman Petty has his own studio. The studio was put here for the Norman Petty Trio. Okay. It wasn't intended to begin with to record artists from anywhere around the country. But uh, when uh, Roy Orbison came here, he needed something done. Buddy Knox came here to get some things done, so it, it became more commercial then mm -hmm. as it uh, spread out to other artists. It was coming so rapidly they could hardly keep up with it. They had 12 major hits in 15 months time and much of it right out of this studio. And uh, Norman told him along, you know, the way things are going, buddy, you need to get a manager. And buddy said, well, I have one. He said, well, who is it? He said, you are. <laughs> But uh, Norman did sacred music, he did easy listening. He also did country and uh, rock and roll and uh, a lot of uh, early 70s. But he was, he was versatile, I think that's what kind of made him relevant. Not Come many on. studios were as versatile or as innovative mm -hmm. as Norman Petty. So he had no boundaries, he was unorthodox. If it created the sound that he wanted to no. do something different, and he did it. And talk about sound, Kenneth took me over to hear some of the original Buddy Holly tracks. When they finished a session, they would come in and listen to the playback. So, why don't you have a seat here where Buddy Holly sat? It's the very oh, same chair. This is that, it. That's what I usually, usually do so cool. when uh, people want to hear what it sounded like mm -hmm. then because they wanted to know then what they were going to sound like on the radio. Right, yeah, that stereo right. sound. You uh -huh. feel like you get every bit of the recording. You know, you can tell that it's all... It's just like you were like, there. This man. is a time capsule. Totally. On that note, pun intended, Kenneth showed me some of the rare vintage instruments still harbored in the studio. I even had the chance to play Vi Petty's piano, the same one used in all of the Buddy Holly songs. And the sound of this room is something you have to experience to believe. Every panel, every wall was designed by Norman to get the sound he desired. The precision that went into each detail is astounding. Beyond the mind-blowing sound, sitting in this room amidst all these instruments, you can feel the energy of the musical legends that once played them. And the fact you can have this type of interactive experience, that these instruments are not placed behind ropes, is remarkable. The museum is open normal times during the week, but you have to book an appointment on Saturdays. To see the recording studio, you have to book well in advance, and it's totally worth it when you get to sit in the same seat that Buddy Holly did so many years ago. And if you get hungry, you can grab some of the best taquitas in the state at the 1950s classic Foxy Drive-In down the street.